Hi everyone, in our last video we went over the history of ergonomics, so now let's apply that to Naya Create. So first, let's talk a bit more about why ergonomics matters. Sadly, already one in three office workers suffers from RSI, which causes a total loss in work absenteeism to the US government of 8.1 billion. That is over two and a half thousand per person working in this field. And these numbers are not going to get better in the future. Young people spend considerably more time in front of their computers, far exceeding the eight hours that we're measuring in office workers who have already shown above 33%. And the sad thing is that it doesn't have to be this way. We understand keyboard ergonomics fairly well. It's not something where we have to reinvent the wheel. We just have to put into practice what we have already known for decades. And Today we want to talk a little bit about what those basics are that we think should be a baseline for any keyboard and not a feature that we have to advertise for every product again. So let's jump straight into the first feature, splitting the keyboard, probably the most important one. Recently, we have talked a lot more about CANs instead of just RSI, complaints of the arm, neck and shoulder, taking a bit of more a holistic view. Instead of just looking at our fingers and forearms, we are looking at our shoulders, our posture, our neck. What we want to do to sit more optimally is move the keyboard uh, to shoulder width, to have our arms straight and to look straight instead of being hunched over with our arms diagonally over the keyboard and our wrists bend outward in ulnar deviation. When we have them on the keyboard while split, our arms are straight, our fingers extend straight in a line forward and backward, and we can look straight at a raised screen where the address bar is on eye height. Ideally use a stand if you use a laptop. So with this, we now also want to avoid any other peripheral devices that might move our hands away from these optimal locations, such as pointing devices that we will usually position in the middle of our keyboard. These we will no longer need because we have a better option. We can either use a trackball or a touchpad, depending on what you like more. And that frees up the center between your keyboards to have a nice drink, either a tea or a coffee. So let's move on. Let's talk about low profile. What we want to do here is to avoid wrist extension, the upward bending of our wrists that can restrict blood flow into our hands and cause strain on the tendons on the lower side of your arm. What we need to do here is not really go all the way to neutral or negative tilt. Um, we really just want to avoid excessive upward bending. For that, we want to reduce the height of the keyboard to below 12 millimeters. That means we need to create an extremely thin body barely thicker than the height of an iPhone, seven and a half millimeters. And the keys are only about four millimeters above that level, giving you a really neutral rest position. So let's move on to the third core feature, tenting. With tenting, we want to avoid uh, wrist pronation, the twisting of the two bones in the forearm when you have your arm flat on the table. For this, we want to bend the keyboard slightly outward. Again, we don't need anything extreme here. A few degree will solve basically the entire problem. Most keyboards integrate some kind of feed or system on the underside that props up the keyboard. In our case, we can bend the keyboard with two high resistance torque hinges in multiple points in the keyboard that allow you to prop up the entire keyboard outward. And this is then a very natural typing position. In Naya Create, we have added a secondary hinge on the outside of the keyboard. We call this outer part the wing. The wing stays flat even when you tend your keyboard. And that allows you to keep your hands on the table even if the main keyboard is tented. Because the keyboard only starts tenting after the point where your pinky and your other fingers are actually on the keys. So let's talk about wrist rests for a second. A lot of keyboards come with either solidly attached or detachable wrist rests. And they serve a great purpose. They prop up your palm so that you reduce the wrist extension. That is great, but sadly it comes with a few unintended side effects. For example, it lifts up your palm, which also means you cannot rest your arm on the table easily anymore. More of an issue comes when you start tenting your keyboard, as now your entire keyboard is lifted up, which means your arms are even further up in the air and you definitively cannot rest your arms anymore. But more troublesome, it tilts the entire palm pad and the entire wrist rest slightly outward um, making it less easy to rest your hands on a, well, downward facing palm pad. By keeping the entire keyboard extremely low profile, as well as adding that secondary hinge, we were able to eliminate the need for a wrist rest, even in a tented position, as the keyboard only tends 
after your fingers are on the outer keys. That means that you only rotate your hand without ever lifting it up at all. So similar to how it is when flat, it also does not require a wrist rest when tented. Next, let's talk about key locations. Our entire keyboard follows a smooth curve across its entire column range. Every column is shifted up and down a little bit, creating a columnar stagger instead of a pure ortholinear layout. But not every column follows the shape of the keyboard. Some are shifted up or down a little bit, depending on how exactly your fingers align. Most notably, our pinkies are dramatically shorter than our other fingers, meaning that the column of the pinky is shifted quite a bit downward, allowing you to easier reach the lower keys, while also keeping the upper ones within range. So let's talk a little bit more about travel. I don't mean key travel, not the thing when you press a key how far it goes down, but how far your fingers have to move to reach certain keys on the keyboard. Generally, we try to reduce the amount of travel we have to do and the amount of motion we have to do because it allows us to type faster, to reach keys better, and to generally be a bit more effective in typing. But we don't want to have things so close that it feels sponged up and tight and we can't really differentiate keys and don't know what exactly we're pressing. So we had to strike a balance here. We made our own keycaps, we sculpted the key tops, we made every shape so that it easily fits and falls into your hand. This is also why we didn't integrate a key well, as this allowed us to way more individually tune every single cap directly where we needed it, without adding the huge bulk and shaping the PCBs and everything else. So we have experimented a lot with the key spacing. Not every key needs to have exactly 19.05 mm in horizontal and vertical dimension. That was purely a limitation of the switches at the time. What we instead found is that vertically it is much easier to move than horizontally. So we reduced the distances vertically and kept the horizontal ones the same for your main home row and then reduced them on the outsides. That allowed many keys to come into range that would otherwise not be but kept the main keys cluster free and very easy to reach. We've added other such features that reduce the amount of movement your hands have to do while typing. For example, the dock keys can be used to activate layers that allow you to type F keys or a numpad without having to move your hand away from the home row. This is how we managed to eliminate the F row or the numpad entirely, so you don't have to move your hand to a different location to type these symbols. And it adds a few more keys that you can use with your thumbs in any way you like. Because isn't it ironic that on a keyboard both of our thumbs press the same key over and over, while on a phone our thumbs do all of the work? Last but definitely not least, let's talk a little bit more about what makes Naya Create so special. The attachable modules. We really designed a keyboard around the module slot. And that means that the module slot is in the single best location it can be. Right between your index finger and your thumb where you hold everything, where you grab everything, and where you have by far the best fine control. This also allows for multiple different options to use these devices with your thumb, with your index finger, maybe with multiple fingers, maybe with both, with a dial between your index finger and thumb. And that is really the premier location. It has determined every other decision that we have made, from where and how we split the keyboard, which columns we have added, where we have the dock keys, and how we structured the board in general, how our tenting is done really just to give the best location of the keyboard to what it makes our keyboard so special, modules. This is how Naya Create implements the baseline for ergonomics, something that I hope in the future is not a feature anymore, but something that every keyboard should have. All of that being said, if you haven't seen our previous video yet on the history of ergonomics and how it has developed, you can find that over here. Then I hope you will join us for the next video. This allows you to rest your wrist um, on the wrist rest. Wow, that is a sentence. Have solidly attached wrist rests, which allow you to rest your wrist on the wrist rest. No, I'm not doing that again. <laughs>